Do 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 do. Ratta da da da. Do do do. Oh, hello out there. Wow, eight of you already. What a trip. Uh, all right, welcome to uh, welcome to Thursdays. <laughs> Thursday minus two days. Uh, welcome to our live stream. This is uh, today will be a I'm calling it a cross curricular live stream, and I don't, I don't think I've ever I've used uh, I don't think I've used the uh, the term cross curricular with you, but as you might be able to guess by the um, by those, ugh, by the books up there, uh, cross curricular means it goes across the classroom. Actually, I'm just showing you the classroom now so I can fix the camera. All right, so the way the classroom looked right there is uh, that is all that's going to change. The classroom's going to change somehow, um, no matter what, it's going to change ugh, because. Um, not all change is progress, but all progress is a result of change. Not all change is progress, but all progress is a result of change. Uh, that's a quote. I don't know who said it, but... Uh, that's a quote that I've found to be true. Um, I've changed my teaching. To I teaching with Darn Dog and teaching with uh, Sammy. Well, Sammy only joined my um, teaching this year, uh, and Darn Dog. I do, I briefly used Darn Dog or Darn Dog <laughs> as a teaching assistant. Um, Darn Dog and I started working together most intensely this year. So all of you that uh, enjoy his shenanigans or our shenanigans, thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah, so, and I think, you know, my changing my, my teaching, changing my teaching to include uh, him uh, and Sammy, uh, I think that change has been, um, has been good. And I, I don't think I'm gonna stop. No, I know. I know I'm not going to stop using Darn Dog. Um, so that, that's an example of my teaching uh, progressing, right? I've, I've changed what I, how I, I changed how I teach, and it's changed for a, a, in a good way. It's a good change. Um, some change, when, when we make the change, we don't know if it's going to be good or not. Um, uh, what's an example of something I wasn't sure if it was going to be good or not? Oh, so I decided to change my teaching and start do 3D printing, right? I had no idea uh, if it was gonna be successful. I still I still don't know if it's gonna be successful, but so far it feels good. It, um, you all seem really, uh, most of you anyway, most of you seem really excited about it. Um, the, uh, seem really excited about, you know, printing out the things. Um, uh, Noah came over uh, and saw his, uh, so one of his prints, um, Vihan received, you know, his print. So I'm, I'm continuing to make progress that way. Um, and there you go, progress. All right, that feels like a positive change. Um, other changes that I've made, not all the changes I make feel successful. Um, trying to think of some, some changes I've made that are not successful. I think my thing is when I make a change, if it if it doesn't work, I try to, I try to forget about it. I choose to forget about it or I just do. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, uh, so what are, what are we doing today, Mr. Corcoran? Uh, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to uh, do a little bit of a review of where we are. Um, I wanted to give you kind of a prediction um, or my, my plan, <clears throat> my plan for what we're going to do um, Thursday and Friday, because uh, this is really unusual in that no matter what happens Monday, um, I have to I have to leave work for you to do Thursday and Friday, and uh, that's unusual. So, what else? Oh, uh, I wanted to talk about a little bit about the new school uh, because, in addition to the change of um, of whatever is going to happen starting Monday, 
that's still, we still have, once we get to the end of the year, you know, all this stuff is going to be packed up and go to our new school. Uh, and you're going to start fifth grade um, in a brand new school. So that, that's a change that I'm really looking forward to also. Uh, so that's really it. Um, if I get tired of talking and you get tired of listening, uh, I, the other thing I'm planning is, uh, hey Siri, in 12, can you set a timer for 12 minutes? Okay, 12 minutes and counting. All right, so in 12 minutes, I'm going to play the next chapter of, I recorded myself reading uh, Island of the Blue Dolphins. So I'm going to uh, show behind me, back here, I'll put a, 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 a drawing. I'll start drawing um, a, uh, sorry, I'll start drawing something from Island of the Blue Dolphins as we all listen. That's what it is, as we all listen to Island of the Blue Dolphins. So one last uh, attempt at a, stretching my teaching because I don't think I've ever done that where I broadcast myself reading to you and then draw while a recording of me is playing. It's it's pretty high tech for, for me anyway. All right. So uh, I guess that's that's the those are the bit the big things. Um, yeah, blah blah blah. Cool. So people are people are in the, the Google classroom stream here saying Saying pleasant trees, like saying hello to each other. Um, oh, Lena already decided not to watch the not to watch the chat. That's okay. Uh, cool, 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 cool. All right. Um, so where was I? Oh, for this. Okay, so for this, um, for this Thursday and Friday, here are the pens. Yes, thank you. All right. So here's my plan for. Um, I want to give you a heads up for Thursday and Friday. Okay. Thursday. For Thursday. Oh, look, there's even a little. Can you see that scene? Oh, I guess, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a scene, right? right. Thursday. And, oh, I guess we just do right. Right. All right, so my, um, I'm going to be really busy. Whatever, whatever um, final decision is made, uh, I'm going to be busy both days uh, getting the classroom ready, getting my teaching ready, etc. So I'm, my plan is just for us to continue uh, to continue what we own, Let's see. to continue what we started for the subject areas, right? So for Thursday, you know, the first thing we have is a reading workshop. So reading workshop, uh, writing workshop. Um, ooh, that's nice. I forgot that I could do that. Uh, math workshop, and then California uh, changes. Oh yeah, that's it. So uh, for for reading workshop, you're going to continue with the. Uh, there we go. Uh, you're going to continue with the. Uh, if you haven't, I mean, number one. I need your um, the slideshows. Yeah, uh, you're gonna continue with. If you haven't done it yet, you need what is it between? Probably need between uh, five. To be honest, five and eight slides. If you have more than eight, that's outstanding. Um, if you have fewer than eight slides, um, I'll I'll take it. You know, five five is better than nothing. So if you have zero. Time to get at least five slides. So five to eight slides, and then one of the slides, right, one of them is your 12 question slides. 12 questions. And I'm gonna put Q and A because um, in order to make your, in order to make your uh, quiz, right, your weather quiz, in order to make your weather quiz effective, uh, you need to make sure you have your questions and multiple choice answers. So um, let's see, a, a map, what would be a weather one? Oh, uh, earthquakes, the intensity of earthquakes are measured by what device? <laughs> Thermometer, uh, ruler, Richter scale, Pokemon ball. You can have one silly answer but the other three should be reasonable, right? So 
Um, so 12 questions like that. And then you're going to, I'll, I'll leave a video, right? So this will be red. So, oh, oh. so I'm gonna leave a video, right? I'll leave a video about, you know, how to do the slides, just a, a review of how to do the slides. I'll do a, a review of how to make a, um, not only how to make a, not how to, how to make a, um, a survey, survey, poll, poll, that's what it is. So how to make a Google, uh, Google survey or poll, whatever that thing is, whatever that purple thing is. Um, but I'll also uh, leave a video, uh, the vi in the video will be how to make it a quiz. Because you're actually making, um, in addition to making the 12 Q&A, you're also making a quiz. So I'll take that over to here. We'll take that over to here. So if you, if all you do Thursday is you work on your slides and then your 12 questions and answers, then on uh, Friday you can finish finish the uh, Google. I think I'm writing this correctly. I think the term is Google. Oh, people who are in the chat, is that what it's called? Is it called a uh, Google form? Form. Okay, Google form. Because you can make a Google form. An example is, uh, for example, I'm actually thinking of using a Google form with my next year's fourth graders. And the Google form would be a way to gather info about them. You know, I could do, it could be a survey. Um, actually, that's how I make the surveys for you all. Darn dog knows that. I make surveys for you all by um, going into Google Forms. He wants to keep an eye on you. <clears throat> He's right. How are you doing out there? Hey, shh, teach him. Stay. Yeah, so finish your Google Form. Make sure it's a... Uh, I'll put it like this, right? You're going to take your Google form and it'll be a quiz. Because what you can start to do as you enter uh, fifth grade and, and at middle school, you can start you can start doing this to, uh, I don't know, help yourself study. Uh, you could do this to, <laughs> uh, yeah, you could do this to um, help yourself study. You could, oh, you could do this to like quiz your friends. <clears throat> right. If uh, if you all are what's in fifth grade? Oh, in fifth grade, you're going to learn about U.S. history, right? So in fifth grade, um, if you want to uh, build a quiz about the fifty states and the capitals, or um, something like that, if you if you want to build a study guide, you could go to Quizlet. You could go to you know all those apps or whatever, or you could make it yourself in uh, Google Forms. So for reading workshop. That's what I want us to do for uh, for Thursday and Friday. If those of you who are done, once you're done with your um, this Google form, the challenge. This will be the challenge. I think the challenge. Uh, yeah, sure. um, the challenge will be. I'm gonna put a um, maybe a highlight. So what I want you to do, if you're done with everything, what I'll do next is uh, you can start making the cards. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, all right, so uh, you're going to make the cards, those little fact cards. Um, I, you know, I kept holding those up to the screen. So you're going to make those little fact cards. Um, yeah. Blah, blah. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll make a note of that. Um, I'm going to take a picture of this in case it crashes. All right. Sorry. All right. There's that. Okay, what's next? Um, writing. Uh, for writing, we are, oops, for writing the uh, the opinion essay, we're still, still on that. Opinion essay. And that's in our, um, I also did a gallery, and I think I'll link it, but I'll, I'll make sure you have it there too. So your opinion essay, uh, remember uh, the strategy that we did recently, the recent strategy for writing was hyperbole. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, rhetorical questions. I haven't done that yet. 
What do you think is the importance of a rhetorical question? Do you think I'm just going to stand up here and, and look at the camera, the whole Zoom? So a rhetorical question is a, is a device, is a writing device or a speaking device where you ask a question and the answer is in it. Um, Mm. All right, opinion essay uh, and uh, revising. So for this, again, my goal for both of these is to leave a video, um, a video f uh, about your opinion essay and how to make them better. Uh, math workshop. Okay, so this, this for me, this is where the fun continues uh, starts. So, and again, this will be. Hey, that's kind of cool. Anyway, uh, opinion essay. Um, I guess just finish. Finished. Revised. Okay. All right. And if you are done, great. Some of you are really close to that, by the way. Some of you also haven't started that. Is that okay? Never too late to get started. Um, all right. Let, next for math. For math, we're doing the um, on Thursday, Friday. Uh, the, the robot, but not just the robot, the uh, evacuation protocol. Okay. So what I did, I left a video about, what was this, 60 something? Oh yeah. So for uh, 65, okay, you're going to, uh, that looks, that looks fun. Oh, you want to look at this? Mm. Oh, 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 oh yeah, looks good. All right. So darn dog's interested in that. So here, right, um, you're going to evacuate. The year, oh, by the way, this is all taking place 10 years in the future. So you're going to, oh. <laughs> oh. I got to say, now that the alarm, now that, that smoke alarm has stopped, the fire alarm, unless it's just stopped beeping, I actually feel like silly, like better again. Yeah. All right, really? That's not a funny one. Uh, that would have been, that would have been ironic. Uh, all right, so where are we? Oh, I gotta hurry up. Okay, stop, thank you, Siri. All right, so for math, um, again, uh, so Tinkercad, of course, if you haven't finished your, uh, if you haven't finished your robot, the standard size robot, Tinkercad, that's step one. Step two, uh, start thinking about what your um, what role, right? What helper role does your robot play? Is your robot a driver, right? We need robot drivers. Is your robot, some of you, some of you were talking about um, for robots, uh, how they would rescue people, right? So rescue, rescue, res. That's my favorite misspell of the day. Rescue, maybe the rescue role, right? Like in an emergency, what purpose does your robot serve? I remember mine is a, it's it's a smasher, like stomps on um, cans and it blows bubbles. But now, now I realize that's not a rescue situation. So maybe instead of stomping things, I can figure out something else it can do with like, strong legs, right? Um, anyway, I have to think about that. I still like the idea of blowing bubbles. Maybe that could be um, a way of like, oh, maybe my robot could be like an emotional support robot for little kids, right? Because little kids might be in an emergency and they need to feel better. So maybe the, the bubble blowing can help kids feel better. <laughs> I'll work on it. Anyway, uh, in addition to that, I want you to also do the, uh, uh, blue? Okay. I want you to, out of the 300, I want you to find rides for how to, how to have a third. It's a really big pen. A third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth, right? Because a third of 300, a fourth of 300, a sixth of 300, and a sixth of 300. And you guessed it. I'll do a, um, I'll do a video for that. And then last but not least, for uh, California changes, uh, we're going to focus on the population and the area in land, the, the acres, right? Acres. Uh, so population. 
population and uh, the acres. The acres of land uh, that, that were occupied by the mission. Um, it, all the 21 missions. Some of them were enormous. Uh, the San Diego one, 50,000 acres. Would we decide that was? 37,000 football fields? It's, well, I don't even know how to wrap my head around that. All right, Darn Dog, you ready for a read aloud? Oh, oh, can't wait. I've been waiting for this for uh, at least like three days. Yeah, actually, it was three days time because I recorded it Sunday. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me go to, should I do this? I think I can play this on my microphone, and then I'll put my um, camera up there. Let's do that. All right, so voice memos. Maybe just uh, screen mirror. Maybe this is better. All right, so this is uh, have a seat. I'm going to have a seat. You're probably already sitting. <laughs> if you're standing up, have a seat. If you're sitting down, stand up. If you're lying down, sit up. All right. It's not touch screen. All right, where are we here? All right, there it is. All right, this is uh, Isle of Blue Dolphins 13. Chapter 13. Did not sleep much the night before I went to the place of the seal. That's not going to work because then. That's not going to work, but I can do this. <clears throat> Plan B. All right, stop the share, or stop the whatever, mirroring. And then I want to do the share. See? Try new things. Ugh. Uh, extreme weather. Okay, I'll check that out later. All right, so. Oh, you can't? Oh, okay, but you can now, Tenzin? That's good. All right, here we go. I'm going to uh, play. That's that's a song. <laughs> Elephants. Thought again about the law that forbade women to make weapons. I wonder if my arrows would go straight. Chapter 13. I did not sleep much the night before I went to the place of the sea elephants. I thought again about the law that forbade women to make weapons. I wonder if my arrows would go straight. And if they did, would they pierce the animals to fight? What if one of the bulls turned on me? What if I were injured and then had to fight the wild dogs as I dragged myself homeward? I thought about these things most of the night. But with the sun, I was up and on my way to the place where the sea elephants lived. When I reached the cliff, the animals had left the reef and gathered along the shore. Like great boulders, the bulls sat on the pebbly slope. Below them, the cows and their babies played in the waves. Perhaps it's not right to speak of young sea elephants as babies, for they're as large as a man. They're still babies in many ways. They follow their mothers around, waddling along on their flippers like children learning to walk, making crying sounds and sounds of pleasure that only the young make. Before they will leave the shore and learn to swim, their mothers have to push them into the sea, which is often difficult to do because of their size. Some distance separates the bulls from each other, for they're bad tempered very jealous by nature, and quick to fight over anything that displeases them. There, we go. there were six of them below me on the slope, each sitting alone like a great chief, watching his herd of cows and babies. The cow has a smooth body and a face that looks much different. His nose has a large hump on it, which hangs down over his mouth. His skin is rough and looks like wet earth, which is dried in the sun and cracked. He's an ugly animal. <laughs> From the top of the cliff, I looked down each of the sea elephants, and tried to choose the smallest of the six. They were all the same size, save one, which was the furthest from me and partly hidden by, the, by a rock. He was about half as large as the others, a young bull. Since no cows were playing along the ways in front of him, I knew that he did not have a herd of his own, and for that reason, would not be so wary, nor quickly angered. Quietly, I let myself down over the edge of the cliff. To reach them, I had to pass behind the others, being careful not to alarm them. They feared nothing, but would not move if they saw me. But it was better, I thought, not to put them on. I carried my new bow, 
which is almost as tall as I was, and five arrows. The path was rough and covered with small stones. It took pains not to send them tumbling down the slope. I was also careful not to be seen by the cows, which get alarmed easily and would have warned the rest of the herd with their cries. I crawled behind a big rock near the young bull, and then got to my feet and fitted an arrow to the bow. Well, I suddenly remember my father's warning that, because I was a woman, the bow would break. The sun was far in the west, but luckily my shadow fell away from the young bull. The distance between us was short, and his back was turned squarely toward me. Still, I did not know where to place the first arrow, whether in his shoulders or in his head. The skin of the sea elephant is rough, yet very thin, but beneath it are thick layers of fat. And though his body is large, his head is small and makes a poor target. Well, I stood there behind the rock, not knowing what to do, again aware of my father's warning that a bow in the hands of a woman would always break in time of danger. The animal began to move toward the shore. At first I thought that by some chance he had heard me. I soon saw that he was on his way toward the cows that belonged to the old bull sitting here. The sea elephant moves fast, in spite of his size, waddling along in his great flippers, which he uses like hands. The bull was nearing the water. I let the arrow go, and it went straight. The last instant, he changed direction, and though the bow did not break, the arrow passed harmlessly to one side. I failed to notice that the old bull was moving down the slope until I heard stones grating against each other. Quickly, he overtook his rifle, and with a single thrust of his shoulders overturned him. The young bull stood as high as a tall man and was twice that length, yet from the force of the blow he rolled into the water and lay there stunned. The old bull bore down upon him, swinging his head and bellowing so loud it echoed against the cliffs. The herd of cows and calves who were lying in the waves and scratching their backs with their flippers stopped to watch the battle. Two of the cows were in the bull's path as he waddled toward his rival, but he went over them as if they were small stones. Using his tusk-like teeth, he ripped a long gash in the young bull's side. The young bull raised himself as he turned, and as he turned, the small eyes shone fiercely red. The old bull slashed him at him again. He struck first and sunk his teeth into the other's neck. He did not let go, and the two rolled over in the waves, splashing water high into the air. The cows had scattered by now, but the other bull still sat quietly on slope. The two fighters paused, getting ready for a new attack. It's a good chance to send an arrow into the young bull, who lay on his back with his teeth still grasping the other's neck. But I hoped that he would win the battle, and I stood there and did not move. The old bull had many deep scars on his head and shoulders from battles he had fought before. Suddenly he lashed out with his tail, trying to loose the hold on his neck and strike the side of a rock. This tail against the rock, he flung his body out of the water and thus broke away. He came quickly up the slope, his great mouth open, the young bull close behind him. He came toward me and in haste to get out of his way, not knowing whether he was bent on attacking me. I stepped back. In doing so, I tripped over a stone and fell to my knees. I felt a sharp pain in my leg, but was quickly up. By this time, the old bull had whirled around and turned upon his pursuer so fast the young bull was taken by surprise. Again, the young bull's flank was ripped open, and again, the force of the blow threw it backward into the water. The, ray, the waves grew redder from his blood, but this time he rolled over and waited for the charge. He met the old bull with his shoulder. The sound was like rocks crashing together. Once more, the young bull caught the other's throat. And together, they disappeared beneath the wave. When they came up, they were still locked together. The sun had gone down, and it was so dark I could no longer see clearly. My leg had now began to hurt. Since my, I had a long way to go, I left them. I could hear their bellowing as I went up the cliff, and for a long time afterward. So, so what I did was I, um, this is something I've been thinking about for a long time. Um, drawing so doing a drawing uh and and having kids uh like follow along with a story it's from a um oh a little over time here um it's from um 
I don't know. It's, it's just inspired by how when I was younger, your, your age and even younger, I was really and still am captivated by people who can draw and make something appear out of nowhere. Um, especially when you're reading a book or having a book read to you uh, where these two sea lions, um, these sea lions are, are battling, right? And the way this author wrote about the, the sea lions like gashing and fighting at one another um, and their gashes, you know, the, the gashes open their, their skin and they, they bled. And it's just very um, painful. Uh, sea elephants, rather, not sea lions, sea elephants. Um, anyway, that was that was really powerful to me. So this is a little cartoony. I, I have like uh, um, growling faces. And this one looks that looks more like Alf than a sea lion, but or sea elephant. But I don't know. The more the more I draw, the better practice I get. Uh, the more realistic it looks. So practice, progress, change. Uh, all of these things are part of life. Um, and here we go. Uh, aloha until next time au revoir. Um, I'll see you all, I think pretty soon for math or whatever's next. Okay. Um, thanks everybody. Mm -hmm.